Welcome to the Transition Podcast, Life After Sports. Today I have the honor and pleasure of having my boy, Dante Harris. Dante, welcome to the podcast. I appreciate you. Thanks for having me, man. I know that this is kind of a quick pivot. Uh, we were supposed to have Nolan Carroll in today. I am Nolan Carroll. I just got a little darker. I <laughs> my tattoos. I'm just not as good looking and we- I can't catch... Yeah, I mean, Nolan was, I guess he was a no-show, so we're hoping that uh, that he's okay. Yeah, yeah. We fired off an email, hopefully we can re- reschedule with him, but um, I'm glad to have, I, I, so I was going to have you in the podcast no matter what, Yeah. I just didn't know what it was going to be today. I'm um, divine, divine appointment. It is a divine appointment. Yeah. So, so for those of you who don't know Dante, Dante just joined uh, our organization here at JAG. And uh, he is leading, he's one of our producers now, and he's leading a huge project for us, and we're super proud uh, to have him on board. Thank you. Uh, his smile, his energy <laughs> is contagious, and we're definitely blessed to have him. With that being said, Dante, tell me things that I don't know about Dante. Where Dante go to school, where Dante's from? Okay. Give us a little background on yourself. Uh, so I'm a small town guy uh, from Aurora, Ohio, uh, small little place outside of Cleveland. Uh, I went to high school. I graduated in 04. Um, I live with a, a friend that I actually graduated from high school with. My mom loves me a whole lot. I'm probably her favorite. I'm not even going to say probably. I'm Do you have brothers and sisters? I have an older sister and a younger brother. I'm okay, so you're like favorite. Christopher in my family. Okay. He's yeah. the favorite. Yeah. They love me, but like he's the favorite. I mean, they love For that, sure. Yeah. Like if, if my mom were like in front of everyone, they'd be like, oh, like... Who's your favorite? She'd be like, Dante. Who do you think she's safe? Who do you think? Oh, like if there was like. Like a ship, right? The, oh, um, uh, I don't know. It's going to toss up. Like it might be my little brother because, I mean, he's like, he's, he's smaller than me. Okay. <laughs> he might need the help. I'm like, I mean, I could swim to shore probably, but like, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it'd probably be me. It'd be. But like for sure. If it like was for my sure, grandma, Christopher. Like Christopher. If it were my grandma. Oh. 100%. Well, my grandmother for sure would have been me. My grandmother texts me number one all the time. Like at her 80th birthday party, she said it in front of everyone that I was her number one. And she like, like brutally just honestly said it. She loves me. What can I say? That's awesome. <laughs> so you're from Ohio. You went, yeah. to, you went to school there. Yeah. Um, did you go to college here? Yeah, I went to Bowling Green State University. Um, I am a Falcon, Ziggy Ziggy Zumba. But uh, at the same time, you know, our football team is not where it should be. Mm, that's a good way to say that. Who came out of no Omar Jacobs? Omar, okay, that's the that's the best. I was name. confusing Jason Taylor, but he's out of Akron. Right. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. He's but we a- had Omar Jacobs back in I think like oh four oh five maybe even oh six. But then he went to the league. He went to the Steelers, I believe. But while he was there, his sophomore year, he threw for forty touchdowns, had four interceptions, had like a four 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 spread cover. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah, he was an ESPN Sick magazine. athlete. He was disgusting. Yeah. And, like, he was so chill. Like, such a nice dude. So, you go to Bling Green. Yep. You graduate. Yep. And what did Dante do after? So, uh, I stayed in Bowling Green, and I, I started working in property management. I started managing an apartment community up there called oh, Copper no, Beach. The favorite. My favorite brother's calling me. The favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, man. Uh, I started managing an apartment complex, and from there, uh, it turned into a career as a property manager. And so then I started to go from state to state. So I moved from Bowling Green, Ohio, to Huntsville, Texas. And then I was in, where did I go? Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, that was the year that they won the national championship, so that was an awesome time. And then I also moved to uh, Charlottesville, Virginia, and then I moved down to Miami after that. And then uh, the property management thing was going, and it was going well. Um, I was over at FIU's main campus, the okay. Modesto. I'm trying to work on my Spanish. I live in Miami for five years, and I come I, on, I man, nothing, bro. You're struggling, dude. <laughs> it hurts. Like I was, I was in a room with guys painting, and I'm like, but eh. <laughs> so yeah, I heard Charlottesville. So Louis Gazzatu and I used to hang out in Charlottesville a lot. Yeah, yeah. Our junior year in college, so we went to play summer baseball the year, uh, and um, for a team in Waynesboro, Virginia. Okay. And that was about 20 miles west of Charlottesville. Okay. So we used to go out to UVA, hang out, party. Yeah. During, like, you know, whenever we could. I mean, the parties aren't that great, but yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Like, everybody wears, like, a 
like a tie to the football games. Yes. It's, 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 it's uh, different. And then also they're not like freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, they're first year, second year, third year, fourth year. And then if you graduate, you're no longer a who now you're like, I don't know. It's like, if you're an undergrad, you're a who once you graduate, like, like, I don't know. It's like cat in a hat kind of stuff. Like yeah. Dr. Seuss is apparently from Charlottesville, which was pretty cool. Somebody um, said Dave Matthews is from there. I believe that. I believe that. I didn't really like get out of my house too much. It was okay. like, go to work, go to the gym. Go home. And do your thing. Do it again. Do it again. So I think that, you know, one of the things that I, I talk about in the podcast, we know I've talked about transition and yeah. I've talked about, you know, the characters of discipline, um, work ethic, yeah. preparation. I mean, yeah. things that I, that, I, that I talk about all the time. And I think where I want to take this with you is 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 really on the transition of the spiritual side of transition. Okay. Um, I think that you and I connect a lot in the sense of that you and I have had conversations in the past Absolutely. openly about God. Yep. And we talk about the importance of us knowing that, you know, how important it is for us human beings to have faith and, and, and how much that helps you transition yes. in life and not how that becomes an anchor. Uh, so let's, let's kind of, I'm, I'm just going to drop. Let's dive I'm, in. I'm, I'm going to dive in, dude. I'm, I'm going to get hard to it because this is part of the transition podcast and this yep. is a part uh, of the transition that really selfishly helped me, man. So you lead, first of all, Tell us what you do at, 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 at your church. Okay, so I'm a part of VU Church, and uh, VU is short for the word rendezvous. And uh, what that means, it's, it's the meeting place. So our church is basically a meeting place where people who are far from God can come get close to I God. I didn't know that. It's pretty cool. Yeah, right? Like, yeah. If you, <laughs> so I mean, it has a purpose. I, I didn't know why. Yeah. I, uh, if, and I mean, I think VU also means you in French. So it's like you, church, because what the church is, it's the body of Christ, right? So it's not a building, it's not uh, a structure, it's the people. And so you are the church, wherever you go, wherever two or three or more gather, there he will be. And um, so VU Church, I'm, I'm a part of that community and I serve on the kids team, what up VU kids? And um, so I get to hang out with kids, I get to be a kid every Sunday for an hour and a half. And then I also serve in a couple other areas where I facilitate for Growth Track, which is our discipleship program. And really and truly, uh, we have these small groups called Crews, where we uh, meet up in public spaces and talk about God, we, like break open God's word and get to know each other in a more intimate setting. So it's not like a big gathering on Sunday, but then uh, during the week we have like gatherings where it's like 15 to 35 people and we can get down to the nitty gritty. Like, what are you going through? What are you struggling with? What can we celebrate with you? And that's amazing uh, that you're doing that. And I always believe that in, in, in giving is, is when you receive. And Absolutely. And, so to take it even a step further, you and I have discussed this. How much, how much has your faith helped you uh, not only in your personal life, yeah. but in your business life? Yeah. And, 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 and how did that even play a role uh, of, I mean, uh, again, we can go back to the story about when you were first interviewing with us. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty crazy, the, the stuff that you went through. How much of your spirituality and your faith ha has it helped you transition through all these transitions that you've, that you've faced in your life from moving to different places and the big one really going from, from one career yeah. to what, you know, to, from property management to becoming a, a, a fitness trainer over yeah. at Barry's and now... Uh, leading uh, a huge project for us on the insurance side. And I think, you know, like you and I have talked about, finally finding uh, the long-term career path that, mm -hmm. that, that you want for yourself in order to, to, to prosper and give your family a better life. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, faith has a huge part, right? So like when I was doing property management, I, I knew who God was, but I wasn't really like participating in church. I wasn't going regularly. I wasn't opening my Bible, but then... Um, I can look back and like, you can even ask people who knew me then they'd be like, you just weren't as happy. Like I've always been like a, a pretty happy person, but just not as happy as I am today. And I think that that's just like the joy of the Lord, honestly, because I believe that the best is yet to come. So everything that I've ever done, ever gone through, ever been a part of, like it's been great. And I could use those experiences to go ahead and propel me to where I'm supposed to go. And it's all a journey. Like the, the plan for my life has already been laid out. It's up to me to be obedient and to put one foot in front of the other 
to walk it out. And so transitioning from career and um, not really knowing what was going to happen. Like, so when property management ended, it was just kind of like, okay, for those next three months, where am I going to work? Like, what am I going to do? And and that's and and for the and, and for the listeners, that's tough. Oh, oh, I mean, a career change is something that's not easy. It's stressful. Yeah, it's you second guess yourself every day. Uh, you 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 go through sleepless nights. Yeah, you and and, and again, well, I you slept go, pretty good. Yeah, I well, didn't, I didn't have to be. A, no, you know? but I mean, <laughs> hey, if, if you're a person who's in transition right now mm -hmm. for a career change, or something's calling you, and you kind of have that fear yeah. of making that change. Give them some advice. Like, t talk about that's that's true transition. But at the end, but and and how, and how faith correlates to that. So my thing is, um, like, you're in order to grow, you have to be planted, right? So like, if you if you continue to to deep hot or transplant a tree, like it's it's gonna be in shock. And so at some point, it's not gonna grow anymore. And so with me, like, I understand, like, okay, if I'm in Miami, like I'm supposed to be here, I need to be planted here. If if the seasons change, like the plant doesn't go anywhere. The birds may fly away, but the plant can't leave. So I needed to make sure that like throughout whatever transition like God had for me, I needed to be planted so that I could I could grow and I could produce the fruit that he wanted me to produce. So when I was in transition like of careers and it was like, okay, like be all in. Wherever you're like whatever you're doing, be the best you. Like there's no better you in the entire world. I, I love that you said be all in. Because if 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 you're all in, like, if you fail and you're you and you're all in, like, hey, man, it just wasn't supposed to work. But if you're trying to be someone else or you're trying to do something else while you're trying to be all in, like, you're not fully committing to it. Like, that's what it is. Like, in our, in our society, like, it's a lack of commitment across the board, um, whether it's, like, I relationships. Think, and, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a lack of discipline and a, a lack oh, of, yeah. of, of commitment and, you know, Going back to my baseball days, the reason why I was able to walk away from baseball mm -hmm. in a peaceful manner was because I was all in. Yeah. I gave the game everything yeah. I had as a call, as a high school kid, as a college baseball player, and as a minor league baseball player. To the day I realized, you know what, this is this is coming to an end. But the, and that was the piece. Mm -hmm. I think that people struggle with. I think with a with a regret or the. Uh, the unpeacefulness, yeah. if that's even a word, comes is when you... I know what you mean. You know what I mean. <laughs> but or, or, or the restlessness comes when, yeah. when, when you weren't all in yeah. and then you failed and then you're like, okay, if I would have done this. And I, I, there's always the if, right? Like you're always like, if I would have done this differently. But here, just remember, like it happened exactly how it was supposed to. Like people are affected the way that they're supposed to be affected by your actions and your words. And it's up to you on what you say to people. So like you can, like the power, uh, the power of life and death is in the tongue. So I can either, I can either speak powerful, peace dude. over you and I can speak life over you or I can, I can tear you down. Um, it, it takes how long to build a building, but then how long does it take to like destroy that thing? And so like when I'm speaking life over myself and I'm thinking like, where am I going? Like, where's my life going? Like, I want to speak life over my situation and understand it's going to be a process. Nothing's going to happen overnight. Like, I wish it happened overnight. I wish there was an easy button that I could push. But again, being in Miami, being planted, knowing that like, okay, I've got to get from here to there. And it's a part of the plan. It's a part of the process. The thing I've been trying to tell myself the past week is love the process. Like I, I was watching ET inspires and he was like, love the process. So like when I go to the gym, like I love being in the gym. I love pushing myself to new limits. I love trying new things. When I when I come to work, like I love going and like taking these practice exams and having these conversations. Like we jumped on a call last Friday mm -hmm. and they like, Dante, go ahead and intro. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Wasn't ready for that. But like it's in that uncomfortable state. It's in it's in the the pain that you get growth. And I want to always be continuing to grow like the book of knowledge and life it's always being written. And when you stop writing it, it's when you stop learning. When you stop learning is when you stop growing. When you stop growing, you die. I love that, man. I don't know that you can say that any better. I mean, I feel like you're kind of reiterating things that I truly believe in. And again, you and I have talked about this. I mean, yeah. I'm in love with the process, man. You know, there's no finish line, Dante. There's no- If you run a marathon, there is. Yeah. <laughs> but. You know, you achieve one goal, yeah. and you move on to the next. Yeah. 
But in the end, I think, I think at the end of your life, I think what we all want is to make sure that we gave it everything we had. Yep. We played the game hard. Mm -hmm. We prepared. And we enjoyed the process, like yeah. you said, man. We, we fell in love with the process. Yeah. And, a, and again, that all happens also with, with your faith. Mm -hmm. when, when you're anchored in your faith, man, and you, and, and you have that, when you know that there's something bigger, faster, and stronger than you that's behind you, yeah. that's there to help you, that's there to guide you, it's a powerful tool, man. Yeah, I think Beyonce said it best, like, we're part of something way bigger, right? I mean, I listened to that song on the way in, but it's, it's true. Like, our role is just a role. Like, if you look at a play, like, I went and saw Hamilton last year, and it was awesome. But, like, if it was just Hamilton, like, if it was just Alexander Hamilton, like, running around singing these songs, like, how boring would that be? Like, he's, he's it's about him, but it's, like, bigger than him. And so it had all these other, like, parts and pieces and roles that play into it. And, and for us, we have to realize, like, yeah, we play a role, but at the same time, like, there's an orchestrator. For me, like, I call that orchestrator God, Jesus. What's up? My homeboy. But... um you, you have to always know that, like, um, take the focus off of you and, like, you're making the world a better place already. Because it, we're, we're already greedy. You know, we're already... Um, yeah, and your flesh is always yeah, fighting. Like, your flesh always wants what, 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 the spirit is, what the spirit doesn't. And it's like, man, like, just, just walk this thing out and then take your eyes off of you. Put it around on the people around you. Like, I don't, I don't give money to people who are, like, on the streets, right? Like... I don't think that um, I don't think there's anything wrong with people who do that, but like I keep snacks in my back seat. Like I got Nutrigrain bars, I got whatever. Like so, when you come up, it's like, oh man, you got anything? Yeah, I got this water. I got this Nutrigrain bar. Like I got this like Nitro Valley, whatever. Like I know that like if you're hungry, like you're gonna take it. But like if you're just looking for money, like bro, I I can give you what I got. I got Nutrigrain bars. So I don't. I don't know anyone who really keeps that much cash on them that much, but like, let me help you because I know that I'm part of something way bigger than myself. And like, although I'm, I'm blessed to have a car to drive around, like, I want to be a blessing. Like, I think that it's really it's great to pray. Make prayer your first response, not your last resort. But at the same time, like, also be an answer prayer to people. Like, that's how you could be bigger. Like, that's how you can take the focus off yourself. Just being an answer prayer to someone. Like paying for some lady's groceries at the grocery store who, who like, had no idea you were going to do it. Like, there's, like, so many, like, small and easy, practical ways to do that. Just, we just got to do it. Was Dante always like that? No, nah, man. I, like, I, I was the guy who used to tell people on the bus, like, yo, the radio's playing. Like, you don't need to sing. Thank you so much. Like, your voice is subpar. I was so mean sometimes. So uh, when did the transition occur? How? Why? What led to that? I was in Miami. Um, I had moved here. I lived here for a year. My first year in Miami was rough. One, I don't speak Spanish, still don't. But, like, I didn't have anybody that could help me, right? And so the only person that was here was my, my roommate at the time, Zach Spring. And, uh, and then he moved, to, he moved to Michigan. When he left, it was literally just me. So I was like, man, I don't have anybody around here. I want to leave. I was, like, interviewing for, like, jobs in, like, Lincoln, Nebraska. And they were like, are you sure you want this job? I was like, oh, I just want to get out of Miami, man. Cornhusker town, huh? Right? <laughs> Thank God, because they didn't get good at football. Sorry. But um, the Ohio State is where it's at. But um, then I got invited to a church. Uh, my roommate, Kelly, her mom, I saw her at a, a funeral back home in Ohio. And she was telling me that she's Kelly, the best, man. I love KP. A, I KP, love, we love you. If you're listening, Kelly we love Pierce, you. Kelly you're my idol. I want to be just like you when I grow up. Um, but she, her mom told me about it. Because, again, I'm from a small town, so everyone knows everyone. And um, I came back down, didn't even hit up Kelly about it. A month went by. I went back home. And um, my dad took me to church. It was, like, my first time going to church in probably, like, seven, eight years. And, like, just going in and started to cry. I'm a crier. I've, I've got a really soft heart. I don't cry every day, but a lot of days and uh um, so do i <laughs> it's healthy dude <clears throat> it clears your vision and um when i got to my dad's church i was like i need to get back into church like i grew up in church but i just kind of like did my own thing for yeah, like 10 yeah. years and so then when i came back down to miami after christmas like right before new year's i was like kelly i want to go to church with you and she was like it's at six i was like oh kelly i don't think i can go to church with you she's like why i was like 
ain't nobody waking up at 6 a.m. She's like, it's at 6 p.m. I was like, I can be there. I, like, I'm going to go to lunch. I'm going to have fun, watch some football. Like, it's going to be great. And um, like going in there and serving with the kids honestly has changed my life for the for the better. Like, who knows where I'd be? I don't really want to know where I would be if I didn't start going to church and serving on the kids' team. But I know that um, I have role models, right? And if a kid calls me a role model, I take that very seriously. You now have accountability, man. I, yeah, very much so. And I use, I, I try and use the world as my accountability. So like on my Instagram, I always put like three things that I need to get done today. And it literally is me telling everyone like, hey, this is what I want to accomplish. And you have the authority and every right to call me out on if I don't do it. Love that. So it's intentional. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm task oriented. So like, that's why I do that. But like with church, like who knows where I would be without food church who knows like i'm sure god like had a plan for me like to, to like work all this out but like um it's it's changed and transformed i, I so think much he did life. but i think you also you you made a choice dante yeah you, you made a choice to 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 change your life for for whatever reason i mean i think sometimes i don't think god grabs our hand and forces us into anything no i think sometimes he's a gentleman he's, he's he gives you the, he gives you the choice you're a gentleman, and we have uh, the right. You know, he gives us freedom, and if we we have the, the we have the right, we can make decisions. Yeah. You know, if we choose to get in a car drunk uh, and drive, then we made a we made the decision, and mm -hmm. that, and and the outcome can can go either way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't think God just a lot. You know, but I mean, I, I guess I, my point is that yeah, we we have you were self aware. Yeah, that Dante needed a change. Da yeah, Dante was a like he was a toxic person. Dante was a liar. I'm, I mean, I'm still like I'm still like a, I'm not a terrible person, but like I still have my struggles. I still have the things that I need to get better at. But uh, at that time, like I was I was low. Like I I don't want to say I was like when I, you say toxic, that's a strong word. Why do you feel like you were toxic? Because like even the people who were around me could feel like the negative energy that I was like just exuding so like even I, can't, if, I can't fathom that with you bro if i could take you back to fourth street comments the office that i used to run um like people would be like afraid to come into my office like yeah i got bad news like i ain't even going into dante's office like it's it's just not even gonna work out like i would be very pessimistic i would be very sarcastic i'm still pretty sarcastic but like in a negative way like i like to be playful sarcastic now but um it would my personality has always been very influential, I think. And um, I, can, I can influence people the right way. I can influence people the wrong way. And for me, like, it starts with me. I understand that. So I got to speak to myself, and I got to identify as a positive person. I have to identify as a pure person. I have to identify as an encouraging person. And by doing these things, my behaviors match up to the words that I say. My behaviors over a consistent period of time are now my habits. And you... And, and, and and you had to build the habits by working hard, yeah. preparing, yeah. Oh, yeah. reading the word, yes. going to church. I mean, I haven't read my word today. But yes. Here's the key word, man. And, I, and, and it, it, it's funny how these, they're, 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 they're simple words, but they, they lead to so much of the success and the prosperity in your life. Yeah. Putting yourself in the right environment yeah. that allowed you and gave you the ability for you to renew your mind and change your bad habits and change your thought process and really learn from those that were spiritually at a more mature level. Yeah. Is that a fair statement? Absolutely. I think um, in the New Testament, in, in Bible, Bible story, something, something, um, there's the... This is like, we can make a Christian podcast right now. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll be so down. Um, I think it's a Matthew. No, but hey, don't dude, it's who I am and this is my podcast, so I get to talk about what I want to talk I about. I love it. If you don't like it, then turn it off. Turn it off. Change the channel. Yeah. Um, I think it's a Matthew, but like it, it talks about the um, the the man who had the seed, and he scattered it on on rock, he scattered it on the ground, he scattered it on on soil, and like um, if you scatter like at the end of it, it's like you have to be planted in good soil if you're going to be produced. Like if you're going to produce any kind of crop, um, like if you, if you plant like you literally if you walk out here on on the sidewalk and you put seed on it, it's not gonna like it's not gonna grow. It's gonna drive yeah. and die. You gotta water it, right? But like as for me, like again good soil, good, good environment. Like here at JAG, like great environment. Like 
I think that I'm able to do a lot of what I do and have opportunities like this because it's good soil, right? I'm, I think at Vu Church, I'm able to have opportunities to pour into people and be uh, life-giving because it's good soil. Like the leadership there is fantastic and, and the people that are pouring into you, constantly encouraging you, celebrating even the small victories of your life, that's all great environment. But like you take that and you put it in like anything else, like you put it in a dark corner, like that, it doesn't want to grow. It, it can't grow. It can't even see the production or, or the progress that it's making. You always want to be in an environment or in soil where you're going to be able to thrive. Like you don't want to just survive. You want to thrive. And I think that as as humans, it's our our job to find our, our niche and our, find our situation so that we can thrive. And if I can thrive here in Miami, you can unplant me, transplant me somewhere else in America, and I can go do the same thing that I was doing before, and that's thriving. That's not just surviving. Like, I can sit in a plant in Miami and just chill and, like, maintain, like, cool, but, like, the Great Commission is to go to the ends of the earth and, and preach the gospel, and I believe, if necessary, use words, but, like, my actions say loud, are louder than my words. I totally agree with that, and, and I think that you... Your gift is really your energy and, and your actions and Appreciate and how you how you communicate with 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 our team members and and with uh, our, our clients and and it all goes back again. See, and and, th and this is the point of, of why I want to talk about the, your faith and your spirituality. All that stems from that, mm -hmm. the seed of, of of having faith, the seed of knowing that it's not about you. Yeah, the seed of knowing that I had to change because yeah. I was toxic and I wasn't where I needed to be, and you also you owe it to yourself, man, to play your best game. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and and I sometimes wonder, Dante, why why us as a society struggle so much with really having an open and vulnerable conversation about n the reality that. Some people are empty, man, and they're just chasing, and they chase, and they chase money, and they chase material, mm -hmm. and they chase fame, and there's nothing wrong with none of that, right? There's nothing wrong with succeeding. I've said it over and over. I run a business. Yeah. I'm trying to make millions of dollars. I'm with it. Billions of dollars. I'm so with that. To be able to bless other people, to create right, but jobs. I, to, that's exactly because it. Because it's not about me, man. Right. And boom, that's it, right? Like everybody is so focused on like me right now. What can I get? What do I need? How can I get the most of that? And it's like, all right, yo, like, but what what are you doing for the next generation? Like that's that's me. Like I want to break generational curses for my family. I want to I want to change the trajectory of my family. Like I want to. Can I can can I give a definition of of because generational curses? Yeah, I know you and I. Yeah, a generational curse is, is very simple, guys. Mm -hmm. If you're born into a family that has alcoholism, yeah, there's a really darn good chance that your children. Or yourself can end up being an alcoholic, right. right? Because they grew up in that environment. That's all they saw. Mm -hmm. That's all they know, and they may think that that is normal and that is their way of coping. Yeah. So when you mention a generational curse, you know that's that to try to make it more fundamental. What that means is at some point somebody needs to break yeah. the habit, like something that you struggle with. So like correct. If, if I if I struggle with Oreo cookies, I do, and like so my do I. kids, so do I. they're so good. I literally have some Oreo cookies on the on the floor of my car. You, so by I the way, you can't them. have one, right? No, you gotta eat the whole six pack. Like, what are these like Oreo cookies that have like the two? What is this pack that has just the two? Like, I, I don't get I it, dude. Do it. Like, I know we have them here, and I I love whoever bought them. But like, yo, I gotta buy. I gotta grab three of those things. Um, but no, okay. So like, if I'm struggling with Oreo cookies, and I um I don't deal with that struggle. Right. And and like I've now passed it on to my 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 seed, my kids. And it's not a for sure thing, it's a probability. Like a proverb is just a probability. 
but like the the likelihood is that they'll probably struggle with that same thing this if not in this exact same way that I did because I didn't deal with it and so if I I can't pass anything on to my kid that isn't like um, tangible right mm-hmm. so like I can't tell my kid um, I can't pass on to the, my kid the gift of gab the fact that like I can have a random conversation in an elevator with just about anybody that um, I like to wake up early now. Like, I can't pass those things on. What I can pass on are my mannerisms. I can pass on um, a company, right? So, like, you can pass your company on to your kids. Like, these are things that they can take with them. And, like, you can let that go. But, like, as a generational curse, like, I want to break the things that are negative that could affect my kids. I don't have any kids, but, like, when I get to that point, God willing, mm-hmm. I don't want to pass on negative traits. So if I was a toxic person, I was like, I got to cut that. I got to, I got to cut that at the root. And I got to take care of that so that when my kids see me, they're not, it's not in a toxic environment. Like I have a friend who, who stopped drinking, right? Cause he's like, I'm, my girls are never going to see me drink. That's that. Like public won't ever see me drink. When can I have a glass of wine? When my girls are grown and out of the house in 16 years and when me and my wife are just by ourselves and having a steak dinner, I just need to make sure that I do it the right way, and I'm not passing a, I'm not passing them something that could be detrimental. Now he's going to teach them the importance of like making sure you don't do things in excess, but it also like it's it's just a great tool that I want to pass on to my kids. And and, teach I, them. and I would guess that he had a bad experience, man, and lived yeah. and lived through something that took him there. But he lived through it, learned from it, and made himself better, and. He's making himself better so that he can have a better future for his girls. And that's it. Like, he took the focus off of himself, put it onto his kids. And because as a society, we have the focus on us. I'm not, like, I'm part of that. Like, I'm, I'm part of the problem. Like, I love going to the gym. Why? Because it makes me feel good. But I also want to, like, create a lifestyle that my kids see, like, oh, like, dad eats a ton of Oreos, but he also, like, is, is active. He's also making sure that he takes care of himself. And you know what, Dante? I think sometimes this is something that's misinterpreted uh, when it's not about you. Yes, you d- f- f- you have to take care of yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah in you order for you to be strong 100%. and healthy to take care of others, right? Yep. You got to take care of yourself physically. You got to take care of yourself emotionally. Think about this. When you're on the plane, and they're, like, they're giving you the whole rundown at the beginning of the flight. When that thing drops down, who's supposed to get it first? The oxygen mask goes on who first? Me. Cause I can't, I can't put it on Becky if if I don't have it on me. If I can't breathe, there's no way I can help the person next to me. So in, in that regard, like when it comes to uh, making sure that you you're getting enough rest so that you can serve people from a place of rest, that's that's great. But like, don't don't like, <laughs> don't just focus on yourself the entire time. I think that as a society, that that's the part that scares me. Like stepping over people who are, are homeless and and not even, like, giving them the time of day, not even talking to people. Like, when someone walks into a room and doesn't acknowledge the people in the room, I think that that's one of the most rudest, the rudest things you can do because they put their pants on just the same way as you, one leg at a time. You know, my dad always taught me that. He said, you're no man, you're no better than any man, and no man's better than you because he puts on his pants the same way you do one every leg single at a time. day. So, so practical. And whether you're black, white, Chinese, uh, whatever you are. Hispanic. We all bleed red, man. Yep. And we all, we're all mortar. Death is undefeated. Right? Has a lot. Death and gravity, undefeated. In taxes. All right, so to close this out, for anybody who's in transition, whether it be work-wise, personally, yeah, in anything, what type of what advice would you give them? Because I'm a Christian, I would say put your faith in God, right? Like everyone has a God-shaped hole inside of them. Take that a little further about put your faith in God. Okay, put your faith in God because we have more faith in our car brakes than we do in God today. Like we can speed through life trusting that our brakes are always going to work. But we, we, we question if the guy who put the sun up in the sky, who has all of the planets rotate around it, and not only are they rotating around the sun, but they're also spinning on their axis. They've never collided into one another. They've never come crashing down. The sky has never fallen on us. But 
We don't think that he can get us through one of our most difficult days. We don't think that he can provide for us when it's something as trivial as a, a meal. And I'm not trying to like diminish the importance of like meals or, or saying like people who don't eat shouldn't be like worried. Like, but but is your first response to like pray like, hey God, just help me out? Because like prayer is so easy. It's just like this and even, help. Yeah, and even if that means just walk around and talk. Try it out. Yeah. If, if you don't believe and you think it's fake. And this is like What's a the fraud, worst that can happen? Just reach right? out, talk to the sky, and be like, "Hey, somebody said that you're you're God or something." And, yeah. and, and I don't know, do you exist? Can you hear me? I mean, worst, yeah. th- worst, what the worst thing that can happen is you're talking to the sky and nothing happens. You're in the same situation that you were in before. Worst thing. I agree, Dante. Uh, You've been awesome, dude. Man, I appreciate it. This was fun. This was fun. I, I want to do this again. This was this was awesome, and we'll, we'll go uh, Old Testament. I think that I, <laughs> <laughs> Leviticus. Listeners, we love you guys. I hope that uh, you really, uh, really. I, I want you guys to know that God loves you, and whether you believe in God or not, I want you to know that God loves you. And if you don't believe, I also want you to know that it takes as much faith to not believe as it does to to believe. So no matter what, God loves you. Amen. Appreciate it.